Thank you. Well, it's a, a pleasure to be back here at the Foreign Press Center. It's, uh, I think it's been uh, 12 or 13 years since I was here last. Um, I had responsibilities for Afghanistan back in late 2001, early 2002, doing uh, rather the similar job uh, as I uh, am doing now as the U.S. Uh, envoy for um, for Afghan-related issues in the immediate aftermath of 9-11. Um, I then retired uh, from the Foreign Service and went to the Rand Corporation, where I worked for 11 years, uh, came back um, at Secretary Kerry's request in uh, May, so uh, I've only been here uh, since May, and assume responsibility for um, overseeing U.S. policy with respect to Afghanistan uh, and Pakistan. Um, uh, we're pursuing a number of uh, uh, interrelated uh, transitions and uh, operations with respect to Afghanistan. Um, uh, as you know, the intention is to reduce the American military presence there uh, over the course of uh, 2014, not to eliminate it. There will still be a significant ad advisory and assistance uh, presence um, uh, in 2015 and beyond, um, but the, uh, the, the troop numbers will come down significantly from where they are now. We're currently negotiating um, uh, an agreement with the Afghans, which would provide the legal basis for that continued American uh, military presence. Um, and uh, 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 we also anticipate that there'll be a continued uh, a presence of other NATO partners uh, and nations, um, uh, probably several thousand as well, um, in the 2015 and beyond um, period. Uh, we uh, are supporting um, the electoral process, which is the, I think, single most important uh, uh, development uh, which will affect Afghanistan's future over the next year. Um, and uh, uh, we are also, of course, maintaining a significant civilian uh, assistance program, which is not intended to diminish uh, even as the uh, American troop levels go down. We're also working closely with all of Afghanistan's neighbors, uh, most notably Pakistan, but not at all uh, limited to Pakistan, um, in an effort to uh, secure regional support for um, uh, Afghanistan's stabilization and for regional economic integration, which will make Afghanistan uh, a crossroads and a regional hub for uh, trade, investment, um, uh, and uh, uh, throughout that region. So I'll, I'll stop there and uh, take questions from uh, any or all of you. And just a reminder, please state your name and your media organization, and we will start them. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ambassador. My name is, my name is Malik Sirajakur. Uh, I'm the editor of the Baloch Hall newspaper from Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan has recently decided after an all parties conference, political parties agreed to negotiate with Taliban, and Pakistan has also embarked upon a process of releasing some of key Taliban leaders. How does the U.S. see that? Do you have like any objections or concerns with Pakistan negotiating with Taliban, releasing their key figures without consulting the United States? Thank you. Well, I think there's two different. Um, there are obviously two different Taliban's, and it's it's important to distinguish them. Um, uh, the United States supports uh, an Afghan-led peace process, um, which involves uh, in, uh, which would involve negotiation between the government of Afghanistan and the High Peace Council that the government of Afghanistan have established to conduct negotiations with the Taliban, peace negotiations. The United States supports that. The United States has uh, sought uh, its own contacts with the Taliban in order to uh, reinforce uh, uh, that message with them. Um, uh, Pakistan has also been helpful in this regard. Um, I think Pakistan has also, uh, particularly over the last uh, six months or so, become active in supporting uh, an Afghan reconciliation process and urging the Afghan Taliban to participate in that process. Um, uh, there has been discussion about opening a, a Taliban political office in Doha. Uh, some progress was made for that, toward that. There was a, a false start back in June. Um, the office is not currently open, but we would like to see it open. We would like to see Doha become 
a forum for negotiations about peace in Afghanistan, negotiations principally between the Afghan High Peace Council and the Taliban. Um, in terms of uh, the uh, Pakistani Taliban, we, of course, have no direct uh, role in that uh, regard. Um, we do understand that there was an all-parties conference in Pakistan. Um, uh, certainly, the government of Pakistan has talked to us about this issue. I've visited Pakistan three times since taking up this office, and um, on all of those occasions had opportunities to meet with the uh, uh, the Prime Minister and with the Foreign Ministry and with uh, leaders in the, Ameri in the Pakistani military. Um, this issue came up, but it's not one that the United States is as directly engaged in as, is, as it is in the uh, peace process in, um, uh, in Afghanistan. Hi, uh, Ambassador. This is Chen Weihua, China Daily. I want, you talked about uh, working closely with uh, Afghans' neighbors, and uh, obviously uh, there is a, a recently a uh, trilateral meeting between China, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and also Chinese uh, President Xi Jinping talked about this uh, new Silk Road, which is you know a more sort of a economic cooperation that involves Pakistan. So, and there is also this Shanghai cooperation that probably would take Afghanistan, Pakistan as members. So could you share us with uh, your vision how U.S. and China could work uh, more closely regarding Pakistan, Afghanistan, and in the region? Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, we have uh, consulted regularly and closely with China on issues related to Afghanistan and Pakistan. Um, we uh, support uh, a greater Chinese involvement in uh, the stabilization of Afghanistan and in uh, the economic development of Afghanistan. Uh, including uh, investments that China has made and, and investments that China might make in the future. Um, we know China has also a close uh, relationship with Pakistan. Uh, I think Chinese and American interests in this respect are largely aligned. I think China, like the United States, is, uh, is concerned about the growth of violent militancy in the region. Um, uh, Af uh, pa uh, China, like the United States, would like to see um, uh, greater security, greater um, uh, and and uh, and diminished militancy in Pakistan, and China would like to see Afghanistan uh, stabilized and no longer becoming a source for potential instability in the region. Um, uh, we in China, uh, the United States and China, have uh, collaboration. For instance, um, uh, just uh, last week, I welcomed uh, fifteen. Uh, uh, new Afghan diplomats to Washington for two weeks of training. This was a joint uh, Chinese-American program. Um, the Chinese charge joined me in welcoming them. Uh, after they spend two weeks here in Washington, uh, they will, uh, in a month or two, uh, also spend two weeks in Beijing, uh, undergoing training from uh, Chinese diplomats in, uh, in the arts of diplomacy. And, uh, and this is only one of several areas in which the U.S. and China uh, are collaborating in, um, uh, in this kind of uh, uh, advisory and capacity building uh, for the Afghans. Um, well, I think that if Iran and the United States are able to overcome uh, their uh, differences uh, regarding Iran's nuclear program, uh, if there begins to be some progress in that regard, then I do see uh, opportunities for dialogue and cooperation on a broader range of issues, including my issues, which is, respect, which is to say Afghanistan. Um, uh, as I said, I, I held these responsibilities back in 2001 in the immediate aftermath of 9-11 uh, and, uh, and did work with all of Afghanistan's neighbors, including Iran, uh, in organizing the Bonn Conference where a new government was, interim government was put together. Um, and Iran was, was quite helpful. Um, the Iranian representative uh, 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 at that meeting was uh, uh, Zawad Zarif, who's now the foreign minister. 
Um, uh, I, I think it's unfortunate that our cooperation, which was, I think, uh, genuine and important uh, back in uh, 2001, uh, uh, wasn't able to be sustained over the over the past. Um, and I think if we are able to uh, make make a, a, a real progress on the nuclear agenda, then the opportunities for uh, progress on these other issues uh, is is definitely there. I think. Uh, objectively, Iran and American interests in Afghanistan are, uh, if not coincident, at least overlap significantly. Um, Iran has historically wanted a, a stable, peaceful Afghanistan. It would like uh, some of the Afghan refugees that are in Iran to go home. It would like to reduce the drug trafficking that crosses its border and creates uh, significant problems in Iranian society. Um, uh, Iran has historically had uh, bad relations with the Taliban. Uh, it's had good relations with President Karzai and his government. Uh, Iran has contributed um, uh, significantly in the economic sphere, uh, particularly in Western, uh, uh, in Western Afghanistan. Um, uh, so there are certainly the, the makings of cooperation, uh, but I think it, it will depend on whether the, the more significant uh, problem in U.S.-Iranian relations can begin to be uh, alleviated. Thank you, Ambassador. My name is Akmal Zawi, and I'm an Afghan journalist working for Voice of America. President Karzai has sought a clarification on your recent remarks uh, about civil war in Afghanistan. Uh, have you or your office provided that clarification yet? Also, um, some Afghan officials who talk to us have increasingly expressed concerns about uh, your position uh, in regards to Pakistan, um, some even accusing you of being too much pro-Pakistan. Would you like to, you know, clarify your position on that? Thank you. Well, the U.S. Uh, the U.S. Uh, embassy in, um, uh, in Kabul has put out a statement clarifying uh, uh, the issue of civil war and how, how one describes uh, the situation there. I wasn't trying to make any particular point in that interview um, and don't have any problems with the way President Karzai describes the conflict um, that both he and we are engaged in. Um, so I'd, I'd direct you to the statements that the embassy put out. I'd, I'd direct you to the statements that the embassy has put out on that. Um, on the issue of, um, of Pakistan, I don't know where those allegations would, would come from. Um, I was uh, uh, heavily associated with the creation of the existing uh, governance arrangements in Afghanistan, the creation of an interim government, which of course eventually led to the constitution, and remain uh, heavily committed to, um, uh, to the survival of the uh, new democratic um, uh, constitutional arrangements as they exist in, uh, in Afghanistan. Hello, I'm John Harper with the Japanese newspaper Asahi Shimbun. Um, can you give us an update on the status of the bilateral security agreement talks, and when do you anticipate that an agreement will be reached? Thank you. Um, the, the talks are underway. Uh, they're taking place in Kabul, um, and we're hoping the agreements can be reached sometime in October, and we're reasonably optimistic that it will be. Um, I have a couple of questions. Aisha Tanzim with Voice of America. I have a couple of questions. A, um, the recent Washington Post story a couple of weeks ago about the surveillance of Pakistan's nuclear weapons and the added concern, um, how severe is that concern in U.S. about the lack of uh, information and the safety of those nuclear weapons? I don't think I'm going to comment on what we still regard as classified information, even though, unfortunately, it's widely available. And, and just uh, about the new government in Pakistan, it, it's been now in power for a couple of months. How do you see this going forward? The last government, the U.S. and Pakistan kind of reset their relationship. Is it continuing on that pattern post-reset, or is it changing uh, with this new government? Um, I think the, the relations did go through a difficult period in 2011, 2012, 
they began to improve before the new uh, government took office, and I think that has been that has been sustained. Uh, Secretary Kerry had an excellent visit, uh, his first uh, Secretary of State to Pakistan, but not his first uh, visit to Pakistan as an individual. Um, he's on a first-name basis with the prime minister, knows the country well, has visited it often. Um, uh, it's, it's clear that we now have a government that has a mandate from the people, uh, that has a clear majority in the parliament, uh, that is committed to moving forward both on the security and the economic agendas, uh, and we're anxious to be helpful, and they're anxious uh, to work with us in order to allow us to be helpful. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, I have, uh, uh, in the Qatar process, we had news uh, that uh, Dr. Bernard Rubin was involved in the uh, in the peace process. Who? Dr. Bernard Rubin. And uh, if you could please update us, there were reports that he is no more with this peace process, or do you think if uh, in the upcoming um, negotiation process, do you think he will be involved? Um, uh, well, I, I'm not sure what you mean by involved. In the end, there never were any discussions in Doha because the... the State Department? Uh, he, what is his position? He, he, so? he, during the period when we were moving toward the opening of the Doha office, he was working with the State Department. He still is. I, I can't predict the future. Um, he uh, and And his involvement was the same as my involvement, which was to say we were seeking uh, to open a dialogue, but it never occurred. Thank you, Ambassador Robbins. Uh, I have a two-part question. Uh, my name is Ali Imran, uh, correspondent for Associated Press of Pakistan. Uh, an important uh, piece of the pie for regional peace is Pakistan-India relations. Mm -hmm. And recently, there have been tensions between the two countries uh, mm -hmm. in disputed Kashmir region. And uh, uh, the two con uh, prime ministers of the two countries are expected to meet uh, on the sidelines of the U UN uh, General Assembly session in New York mm -hmm. uh, later this month. Are you supporting that endeavor towards peace, especially in the context of Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's uh, offer and uh, emphasis on restarting, resuming the peace process between the two countries? And second part of my question is that Pakistan has been uh, uh, seeking uh, trade access, greater tra trade access to the United States. There, in the past, there have been uh, efforts to uh, materialize uh, preferential trade access programs for Pakistan, but uh, not much progress has been made. Can you update us if, if there are any recent efforts? Well, on, on India and Pakistan relations, we would support any uh, initiatives which led to an improvement in those relations. We think it's important. Um, for both countries, it's important for the stability of the broader region. Um, it's important for the world. They're both nuclear armed powers, and uh, a, a conflict between them would be disastrous, not just for them, but for everyone. Um, uh, and, we, and we support improved uh, Afghanistan-Pakistan relations uh, specifically because it would uh, alleviate some of the pressures uh, and tensions that give rise to the conflict in Afghanistan. Um, uh, and so, uh, from our standpoint, um, uh, there's everything to be gained from an improvement in that relationship. Um, uh, on the uh, on the on the issue of uh, preferential trade, I, I don't know that there are any new developments. I I'm unaware of any in that area. Thanks. Uh, Sean Tandon with AFP. Just to follow up on what you said about the Doha office, mm -hmm. um, obviously there, is the, there are the hiccups with the flag, et cetera. Right. Uh, what, uh, how do you see it now? Is there a possibility of, of restarting that? What do you think needs to happen to have a dialogue in Doha or elsewhere? Um, I, I, I think that the, you know, the, the hiccups, as you call them, were a result of a genuine misunderstanding. But uh, as to what the arrangements for the office were intended to allow and what they were uh, intended not to allow. Um, uh, but uh, I think the, the Taliban are now, um, uh, as a practical matter, um, un unwilling to engage uh, with the United States, with, uh, with the Afghans, 
uh, with anybody as a practical matter. Um, uh, and we're not sure, you know, when they'll emerge from this. Uh, so we would still like to see that dialogue initiated, a dialogue which would involve the U.S. and Taliban directly, but also would involve in parallel the Taliban and the Afghan government or its High Peace Council. Um, uh, the Taliban don't seem to be ready for that for the moment. Um, we're not giving up. Uh, we continue to hope uh, that there'll be uh, that there'll be a positive uh, development at some point, but we can't predict when. We have time for one more question. Uh, Igor Tikhanenko, Voice of America, Russian Service. Um, Russia's leadership, including Vladimir Putin, on a number of occasions stated that they are not particularly happy about the U.S. Uh, troop withdrawal uh, for understandable reasons, uh, security and uh, the drug trafficking that you mentioned earlier being the two main ones. Um, are you aware of any uh, negotiations between the U.S. government and Russia's leadership on uh, maintaining the stability in the, in the region after the uh, U.S. withdraws its troops next year? Well, I, I don't know that I would characterize them as negotiations, but there are certainly frequent consultations between the United States and the Russian government. Um, uh, the, Russian, uh, the Russians were among those that I collaborated with quite constructively back in 2001. Uh, after 9-11, the Russians participated in the Bonn Conference and were very helpful there. Interestingly, the, the Russian uh, representative in Bonn in 2001 continues to be my opposite number in the Russian government, that is, the one who has responsibilities similar to mine. And so I'm now dealing with the same person that I did back in 2001. So we have a personal relationship as well as um, a, a, a history of cooperation. Afghanistan is one of the countries where, at least since 2001, the U.S. and Afghanistan, the U.S. and Russia have had uh, largely similar interests, largely similar views, um, uh, some differences of perspective, um, but not differences, I think, in uh, that affect our operations, not differences that re affect our activities in the country. I think that they continue to be quite compatible. And what are those? What are those? Um, uh, support for the Karzai regime, support for uh, Afghanistan's uh, stabilization, support for the continuation of the current constitutional arrangements, uh, opposition to Islamic militancy, um, uh, and uh, terrorist uh, uh, networks that operate through or, or in or potentially could operate in Afghanistan, um, a desire to uh, reduce Afghanistan's uh, production and export of, uh, of illegal uh, uh, narcotics. Um, I think those are all areas where uh, the U.S. and uh, Russia have similar interests and similar, uh, similar policies. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Ambassador. Pleasure. Thank you. Good seeing you.